Welcome back, friends, to the shop. Today's the day I've been looking forward to all week. We're finishing up the French cleats, only two more to put on, and we get to put all the tools and set up the traditional woodworking shop. I've got all the tools laid out here. Let me show you what we have, and then we'll do the last two cleats together, and then we'll start laying out uh, the entire tool wall. That is a lot of tools. <laughs> when I look at everything there, I just it, it before us here is just a, a lifetime of collecting um, uh, myself uh, things that belong to my grandfather. There are tools here that belong to some of your grandfather's uh, subscribers that have sent me. Um, Big Lou's granddad's plane there and uh, some stuff uh, from Stu sent me and it's just a uh, it's, it's just a table of love here, isn't it? It really is something. This doesn't even include the chisels, but uh, just we got our sp spoke shaves there, and we're going to have to, of course, have a place of honor for our <laughs> granddad's uh, brace, um, the, my Christmas gift from Mrs. W a couple years ago, um, this here uh, from my, my father-in-law. Uh, the, rout the routers and the hammers and all the saws and just uh, kind of cool to look at, have it all spread out here. So let's put our cleat on and then we will um, we'll have a place for everything and, and everything in its place. When I originally laid these cleats out, I was thinking of only doing four and wrapping some of the tools like the clamp station uh, on the north wall. But I thought, well, they're so tall here. Let's utilize the whole thing, keep everything on one wall, and then it'll free up some space for... Um, the saw filing, uh, the crosscut saw filing, which we'll be setting up uh, tomorrow. So for these cleats, I've just been used just using uh, a piece of shelving I had for a spacer, and it goes pretty quick. I leveled the first one. Sometimes I wish I had an extra arm. I guess I'm probably not the only carpenter that said that throughout the ages. When I'm building or repairing something on my workbench, the two go-to tools that I have used more than anything else is a bench plane and a saw. So we want to give those the prime real estate, the, the easiest or the best access to our workstation. I was going through this morning on my computer over coffee and, and looking at uh, some photos of uh, turn of the century workbenches by, uh, from shot of carpenters that did it for a living or worked in a shop and and what I noticed about that was the simplicity and the and the organization and there was nothing there that was superfluous that was not used and I really want to take that that concept when I was one nice thing about mo moving is it gives you the opportunity to kind of sift through all those things and to weed those things out of your life that um, that you just don't use what I find, and I think a lot of guys are like this, when you start getting everything together, you look and you find in your tools you've got 50 screwdrivers, right? Do you need 50 screwdrivers? You know, maybe put together a kit for your truck, pick the best one that you have and keep it simple. Just have one set and, and donate the other ones. Give them to someone else in need. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. And I like that look. When you look at a wall, just because you have the ability to cover it with all sorts of stuff and tools, doesn't necessarily mean that you have to, right? So keeping it clean and simple makes for a, a simple and clean mind. So we'll start with the bench planes and then the, just to the right of those uh, will be the hand saws. I think we'll put the hand planes front and center. This is a, uh, just a mount system that I saw online years ago. Uh, that I, has a bit of an angle on it so you can place them right here and they, they, they've never fallen out. Sometimes I've worried that they're going to fall out on the ground, but I've never had one fall out. So now we can, from the bench plane, we can turn from the bench, turn uh, and grab, and then the saw is just to the right. So let's load this up real quick and then we'll go with saws. I don't yet have a full set of Stanley planes, but I'm getting close. I got, this is a number eight. This is the biggest one that they make. Number four, which is my favorite one. All my planes are going to need a little bit of work. They, uh, my old shop was so had so much moisture in it, it was, got so damp that they have a little bit of rust on them. So we'll the next snowy cold day we'll have a, a day of fixing planes. This here is a Stanley number no. five, one of my favorite ones. This is a number no. two. This is one I restored uh, years ago. I forgot where I was supposed to put that one. 
there's they they I think they make a number one or one smaller. This is a really small one. Uh, they make a smaller one than this, but they're really rare. I was looking at one on eBay one time, and it was they're exceedingly expensive. So. I, uh, I, I don't think I'll probably ever get one of those. This is my smallest plane and one of my favorites. This has uh, been used by people who do real fine woodworking, maybe a violin maker. And it, the design of it is so nice. That little, uh, little concave dimple on there is perfect just for your index finger to fit on uh, when you're playing. But just like a big one, only just really, really tiny. <laughs> That's a cute one. This one's kind of interesting too. This is just a little plane that accepts a standard razor blade. And I haven't used it before, but I'm looking for an opportunity for it. Little giant, they called it. I thought it was kind of clever. So you never need to sharpen it. You just put your razor blade in there and you got a small plane for shaving light material. This is a, whoops, this is an odd job. This is a tool that we need to resti restore uh, this winter. Um, uh, it's a, like a, 10 tools in one. I've done a video on, on one before. I had a second one, but these are really in interesting. We'll do a restoration on that. Kind of handy for all sorts of things. This is my uh, dovetail um, guide. My original maker's mark right there where it all started. And then the tiny anvil, <laughs> a jeweler's anvil, something that they would use um, for a really delicate work. I don't think I've used that either, but I've always liked it though. Some of my favorite things I put up there. Just to the right of the bench planes, we'll put our bracket for holding all of our saws. I made this, the first time I made one of these, I put a bunch of cuts in it here uh, for the saws to go into and they stuck off the wall so far I kept bumping into them. So I redid it and put them in at an angle so that it held them a little bit closer to the wall and that seems to work out really good. Uh, if I did it again, I would probably do the same thing. Now you can start to see the advantage of the French cleat system, if something's not quite right and you don't like it, you know, you can nudge it over or you flip flop anything. You can just it infinitely change it, even change the height of it. Uh, it's, a, it's a really wonderful way to set up a tool wall. And there's no limit to what you could build for holding your tools, whatever you need to do. My favorite saws to use by far are the, the Japanese pole saws. They're affordable. They're wonderful to use. Uh, they're so sharp and they're so, the versatility you get, you get a, a cross cut on one side, then you get a ripping tooth on the other. So you basically get two saws in one. The downside is that you can't, well, if you're, if you're a mere mortal like me, you can't resharpen them. I, I've heard people say that they could. Um, I, I don't, I think it's a lifetime study to be able to do something like that. Uh, this is a, um, um, a tenon saw uh, for really fine tooth and, and detailed work there. And the way you, with this cut like this, it, these fit in there very nice and they're easy to grab and to, and to come out um, when you're grabbing them and you need them to work with one hand. Next we have our American saws. These are two very, very special saws. Um, now American saws, of course, cut on the push with the Japanese saws cut on the pole. This is a, a golden guinea uh, made in Sheffield, England. Sheffield, England, that was a byword for tool quality back in the day. I don't know if it's that, I don't think it's the case anymore, but uh, really that was a, that was sent to me by a friend of mine in England. Uh, it was brand new, still in the box, still in the paper when we got it. And this of course is a beautiful, uh, a Distin 100, um, another very, very, look at the brass, five rivets. This is a quite a treasure right here. These are very special saws. We'll need to sharpen those this winter as well. Next up, I have a pair of back saws. Uh, this is a Veritas. This is a new saw. Uh, Mrs. W always buys me a nice tool for Christmas every year. You can still buy these today. They're very lovely saws, uh, back saws. And then here, of course, is the gorgeous Distin, made in Philadelphia, back saw there. That's a, that is a, treasure right there. And then a couple, let's see, like a specialty, probably a coping saw is the only one left. And this is the last one. We'll finish up with a coping saw. Coping saws for cutting real, very tight radiuses, kind of what they used before. We had scroll saws. This one's not anything special. It's not that old. It was one that belonged to my dad as a plastic handle, but I don't use it very often, uh, but it's, uh, it's a, still a good little saw. Another tool that I use often uh, are spoke shaves. Spoke shaves uh, for handle making, uh, lots of different things. I'm always grabbing one of those. This is a little mount that I made just out of plywood there uh, that holds my spoke shaves 
and a draw knife. I use a draw knife for handle making quite a bit as well. So I have, um, these are uh, the old Stanleys. Both these belong to my granddad. Uh, these were, I found them in his, his things. And I don't know what the history is on them. He wasn't really a carpenter, he was a mechanic. Um, I've never saw him use them. I didn't even know he owned them until we were going through his things. But I have those. And then um, this is a, a Stanley spoke shape made for doing uh, radiuses. You can see that it's round. So if you were going to do uh, table legs or even works really good for axe handles, that's a handy little guy. And I love that green and red color. And then this is an adjustable draw knife. This is a really rare one. You can uh, loosen these up and change the angle of the handles. And this um, I was given to me by my old hen a neighbor, Henry, uh, who has since passed on. He was a quite, a quite a guy and used to come over and hang out at the wood stove at our uh, shop back in um, when we lived outside of Portland. And that's a, that's a nice little tool there. I've had quite a few of these pass through my hands. Uh, and this is the only one that I've really held on to. I've got this one and one other one, um, but this one's my favorite. Next up are the braces. Braces are would have been the, the cordless drill back in the day, how you would have drilled holes. And this is the mount that I made. You'll see that these brackets that I've built are pretty random. There's not really any uh, continuity to them. There's just for different pieces of wood that I, I use. This, is all, this one's made out of some beautiful maple. Some are made out of plywood, just scraps of what I had around. Uh, but this is the design, uh, and then these braces all kind of have a rotating top on them, and I made it a little bit deep so it would the handles would fit inside, so I, w I wasn't bumping into them. So these are I use actually use these quite often, and I usually like the tools that I I use a lot. I like them. Um, I turn to my right, and, and I want to grab with my right hand tools that I use less often, uh, like clamps and such, would be over on the left side. This brace I bought at an antique store years ago, and it was in new condition. It even has, still had the original labels on it. And the reason why I bought it, it was because it was nickel-plated, and it's a ratcheting race. You can see it has a dog and paw system there for tight areas. This, was, uh, this one here was my granddad's right there. That's an old timer right there. You can see this one doesn't have a ratcheting, so you have to go full around, where if you get in a tight area, just imagine like a... A ratchet wrench, uh, you can go back and forth, uh, like if you were drilling in, in a hole of a boat or something like that. And this one here kind of even takes it to the next level, a really compact ratcheting uh, brace. With a, I've never seen one of these before. This one, one's really, uh, really a unique design. Uh, fit in there like that? No, it's all right. It's high enough where I'm not going to bump into it. For smaller holes, we've got the, the small egg beater style. This one here is a Stanley, I think 624, I think, in new condition. These are neat because the wood, the handles are wood, and sometimes if you shake them, if you see them at a garage door, this one came with a full complement of drill bits that you could store inside. Look at the wood, the threads cut through the wood there. Those are really cool. Well, egg beaters, so that's kind of a larger one here, and then a, a smaller one also with a bits inside and the handle. And I usually just keep a, like a 16th inch bit on there. That's a perfect uh, little drill bit there for um, pilot holes. If you're working on the edge of something, a piece of fur or something, and you want to join it together with a screw so it won't split. And we'll finish up here with a belly drill. I did such a nice restoration on this and just that old shop was so wet uh, that a lot of that stuff's got surface rust on there. So we'll We'll see to it. This, this is a cabinet that I built for holding my clamps. I put this one up off camera. Um, all these cabinets and different things I built uh, for the old shop, but this whole, I just cut it out to hold my clamps and just made a simple lat latch of a piece of um, aluminum there on a piano hinge. And then I've got a half a dozen of the, these pipe clamps uh, that are just run off of a big threaded nipple, which are a pretty affordable way to get a, into a clamp. And those store in there, and then these over here. And then I have some, um, I put some small cubbies over there for, I usually put my glue bottles in there and some specialty clamps, like this is a, a band clamp that's got a, some webbing if you need to wrap around something uh, to hold it tight. That's kind of useful in some applications. And usually just small glue up items and, and things I'll just put on here. And next to the big clamps, I made a, a little shelf to hold my Jorgensen's and the smaller clamps on there, which I don't get to too often. So I'll, I kind of put those up here off to the left-hand side. 
up high. Still gives us plenty of room for other things, but those fit on there nice. Well, friends, that's probably about all the time we have for today. That's a good start. I need to think about things before I place them. I want to be sure to do this right and, and do it, Lord willing, for the last time. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm done remodeling, done building houses, and hoping that uh, this will be uh, quite permanent <laughs> for, for some time. So, yep, next time we will um, uh, probably put the workbench together. Uh, I built that in multiple pieces because my old shop had a little tiny door and I built it inside the shop and I knew that if I didn't make it modular, uh, I would never be able to get it out and it'd have to stay with the house. So I'm glad that uh, we did that. So we'll put that together. And uh, because of it's been transported and the humidity changes and being outside for a while, you know, we'll have to replane all the top of it. And we'll, we'll do that together and... Uh, and then um, round out and finish the rest of the things. We'll have to build some custom holders for chisels. I've never been real happy the way that my chisels were uh, mounted uh, on the, on the uh, shop, so I'll give that some consideration. Uh, we might have to build something, but I think next up we'll, we'll put that, that bench together and uh, I'll bring you guys along for that as well. That's the foundation of the whole thing. Anything that needs to be built or done, uh, you can't do it uh, until you have a bench. And that's where it all starts. So that's where I would recommend you start is a bench and a vise. Uh, that's where it goes. Bench and a vise, um, hammer and chisel and saws. And it's amazing what you, can, what you can accomplish without spending too much money at all, especially if you look around and find the vintage tools uh, at garage sales and, and antique shops and stuff like that. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Please keep me and my family in your prayers. We're always praying for you guys. May God bless you and your families, and we'll see you guys on the next video.